look what i found i had a wonderful time in new zealand and whenever i go through some of these pictures i feel like i have traveled back to middle earth i am a travel photographer whenever i get an opportunity to travel i take my camera and explore the pandemic put a stop to it and i can't wait to get back on the road exploring new landscapes and meeting new people hi guys my name is navneet unikrishnan i'm a traveler and landscape photographer i was born in kerala and based out of india's it hub bangalore and today we have something very exciting lined up i'm meeting someone whose work i have admired a lot photographer par excellence rachel stewart rachel is from my all time favorite country new zealand and together we are going to chat about our two common interests photography and new zealand so what are we waiting for let's call rachel Hi Navneet. Hi Rachel. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing great and it's very exciting to sit here and have this conversation with you. I've been following your work for a very long time and I'm pretty excited to, you know, have this conversation right now. Oh, that's really cool to hear. I'm super excited to talk to you too. I've actually just been hiking the route burn track in Fiordland in the South Island so I've been running around taking photos and exploring this okay. beautiful country I get to call home great great i hope you made a lot of good pictures this time <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> so rachel have you visited india i haven't visited india but i really want to it's such a bucket list destination um but my auntie actually worked in India about 20 years ago and I remember her telling me some of the experiences and my nana visited and so I got to see photos and of course hear about the food so I love spicy food so I would be going for the food first and then the landscapes all right all right <laughs> So I did see that you have been to New Zealand. I would love to hear your experience from New Zealand. Yeah, I've been to New Zealand. I, I, I did a 30-day road trip around New Zealand. Uh, I did the North Island and South Island. So I basically drove from the north part to the south, and it was a very fun trip. Uh, you know, driving around in New Zealand, and one of the best parts was its right-hand drive. and it was very easy for me to adapt because even I, I, here we have right hand drive in, in in india and the landscapes were very different in each and every single region and one thing i found very common was the people uh, they were very chilled out you know all the in in the in the whole country so yeah yeah that sounds like new zealanders <laughs> we're pretty chilled out We love to show off the country. <laughs> we like to take people to the best places, and we're okay. pretty proud over here. But yeah, it's a very chill vibe. Oh, nice! <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to visit again someday soon. Yeah, we can't wait to have you. I've heard Indians love to come to New Zealand for all the adventure sports. Um I know here that we were the inventors of the bungee jump and the jet boating in Queenstown, which I've done that one, but um I'm a little bit scared of heights, so bungee jumping is out of the question for me. But what did you get up to when you came here? So I managed to do uh, skydiving and it was a great experience. Uh, I did it in Taupo. also i did uh, um, river rafting in rotorua and it was a, a very much memorable experience and the people the instructors were really good and uh, you know they were I, i even i am pretty much scared of heights but you know uh, the instructors were very good that you know they were able to guide you through the whole thing oh good on you you're much braver than me 
especially in the South Island, we are like full of hiking and skiing and snowboarding and hunting and fishing, all of the adventure sports you can imagine. So I guess when you come here, you've got to at least try something. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So what did you like the most about photographing New Zealand? Uh, actually, the landscapes. And what I felt was everything is so close that you get to see, you know, snow-capped mountains, lush green forests, beaches, all these things in a single day, which is something you don't get to see everywhere. So that was something I found uh, very unique. Yeah, it's, it's pretty special that we have coastline and mountains always within about two hours from each other. It's pretty crazy, especially in the South Island. So uh, Rachel, I do astrophotography. I shoot a lot of nightscapes and I badly wanted to shoot a lot of nightscapes in New Zealand. But the time I visited New Zealand was during summer season and I couldn't get to see the Milky Way there. So I'm looking forward to visit during uh, autumn and winter and shoot some nightscapes from there. Yeah, the, I would agree that that's the best time to come for nightscapes is kind of autumn and winter. Um, I, I take photography tours down in the South Island and that's when we show all our people the Milky Way, the core is right in the sky and um, the mountains have some snow. It's really beautiful. So I can't wait to see what you shoot over here when you come back in autumn or winter time. Okay, I'm actually looking forward to it. Yeah, so Rachel, uh, you have heard the places that I have visited in New Zealand. So, what are all the places you would suggest me visiting? I mean, add to my bucket list when I visit New Zealand all over again. So, I, I've seen where you went and I would maybe suggest this time coming into Queenstown and then driving out to Milford Sound okay. like you did. But you can actually stay in Milford Sound Lodge and you can either um, take a camper van out there and you can park it in that area for reasonably cheap or you can stay in the lodge itself, which is absolutely oh, like. beautiful. But if you, yeah, if you base yourself there, then you can go and do sunrise easily, go and do the sunset easily, get your astro, um, take a drive around the sounds, go on the boat. Um, that's absolutely worth doing that. So I would say to do that. And then when you come back out of Milford Sound, um, carry on through Queenstown and Wanaka and then go up the West Coast because the West Coast is also really untouched mountains and rainforest. You've got Lake Matheson there that's a beautiful lake that reflects Araki Mount Cook and Mount Tasman. It's a stunning photo and a really beautiful walk. It's only about 40 minutes to walk around. And then, yeah, carry on up there. Go to the Hokitika Gorge, which is full of blue glacial water, pancake rocks, um, awesome coastal area. Um, there's Kahurangi National Park. There's just so much on that side that often gets missed so um, yeah I would I would totally suggest going up that way and experiencing that side of New Zealand too. Okay yeah, th thanks a lot for the list I am you know pretty much adding all these places <laughs> uh, to my bucket list when I visit the, the next time. Yeah you, you, you're gonna love it. So Rachel, what is that one place in New Zealand that, you know, uh, you keep shooting over and over again that, you know, that pulls you back uh, very often? That would have to be Tasman Lake in Auraki Mount Cook. Um, for me, that was one of the first places I visited and I took a photo there and it went viral and it kind of really kicked off my photography career and getting known that way and so it's always got a bit of a special place in my heart and also it's just 
you know, our Reiki Mount Cook is our highest mountain. He's really special, steeped in culture for Māori. There's a glacier, you know, the Tasman Glacier runs along that valley and it's uh, our fastest retreating glacier. So things are changing all the time there. So each time you visit, something's a little bit different. If the glacier has carved, there's icebergs in the lake. Um, in winter, it's snowy. There's ice sheets that they make for awesome photos um, and experience in general. Um, there's just so much there. There's short hikes there. There's long hikes there. There's, you know, it's just a place that you can go and experience so many different things. So. I always try to go there when I visit Araki Mount Cook because it's just, to me, it's one of the best places you can visit. Uh, that, that sounds amazing. I actually been to Mount Cook uh, and it's, it's very beautiful. You know, the whole lenticular clouds and all that. It's very nice to uh, take a picture during the sunset. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're really lucky, you get the lenticular clouds. That kind of only happens yeah. when there's a nor'wester coming through and the mountains create this kind of wind that make those pancake clouds stack up. So um, you're really lucky okay. if you see them. I've seen them a few times, but I would <laughs> I would love it to happen all the time, right? Okay. I've been there, uh, yeah, once, but yeah, I was pretty much lucky to see it. Yeah. So when you do come back to New Zealand, what's the one place you've been to that you would totally go to again? Uh, yeah, it would be Milford Sound. And I found the place uh, like uh, nature untouched and it's it's pure nature. That's what I felt. And I actually stayed in TNU and uh, I did a road trip uh, to uh, Milford. I shot sunset uh, in uh, Milford. Yeah, I, I badly wanted to shoot uh, the night sky too, but as it was summer, you know, there was no Milky Way, so I, I came back. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've shot a lot in Fiordland and Milford Sound too. It's, it's such an amazing place. It's probably one of the more untouched areas of New Zealand where you can really be with nature and um, it's World Heritage Site, so uh, things are pretty much how they would have been thousands of years ago, okay. apart from the odd boat going up and down the sound. So um, the night sky there is amazing during winter when the Milky Way is up in the sky. So, But beautiful sunrise, sunset, everything. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward soon. <laughs> Yeah, so Rachel, uh, what are some photography tips you can give me uh, to shoot around in New Zealand? Okay, so I would say that maybe scouting out the location is probably a really good idea. Um, even if it's okay. just during the daytime or the night before to go and have a look around and see what's there. Um, just remember if you're shooting in sunrise or sunset to bring your tripod because it gets that low gets right. pretty light um pretty dark um yeah with okay. your astro um it gets really cold at night so make sure you've got some nice warm fuzzies to wear making sure your camera's in focus the, the worst thing you can do is get home and you haven't focused your lens properly. So I would suggest <laughs> doing that one for sure. Um, yeah, and yeah, I guess just being prepared, like um, it's all good to show up somewhere okay. and try and shoot something straight away. But if you've got time, to go and have a little look around mm. first and maybe try and find something a little bit different to what you've already seen. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Those are very helpful. So, Navani, do you have any further tips to add to that? Uh, for me, uh, tip-wise, uh, not much, but uh, probably, like you mentioned, scouting the location, uh, being there before uh, the shoot time. Probably if the if it is sunset as at like 6, you'd be there at five 
you know, uh, look for frames before the golden light begins. And yeah, in the end, just improvise. That is what I do uh, usually. So, yeah. It's been so awesome to talk to you, Namani. I can't wait to catch up with you when you come to New Zealand. We'll definitely have to have a coffee and do something adventurous and go hiking, show you some really nice spots. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see the images you produce over here this time around. Yeah, even I'm looking forward to visit New Zealand all over again and catch up with you guys. Probably go for some hike. And also special thanks to our viewers for joining in. So, yeah, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Hey, guys, thanks for joining in. Please like and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to Tripoto and New Zealand Tourism on their social media handles for more inspiring travel content.